Good afternoon. My name is Clint, and this is Yin Yoga. And to start today, I'm, I want to give you a little history on me. Um, I've always been a pretty creative individual, and um, I ultimately went to um, architecture school where I learned that I wasn't supposed to fall in love with my first idea. And that was done by a professor, Joe Weir, um, after I spent a week working my butt off on you know, what my concepts were. He'd look at it and say, gee, Clint, this looks like you did a lot of work. But did you think about this? Did you consider that? What would happen if this were to change? I think you have more work to do. And every week for four six-hour credits um, semesters, I had him. So I never stopped at the first idea. And that's one of the reasons why I, I tend to, not tend to, I know I do, I encourage you to try something new because you can discover something about your body that you didn't know before. And all the way down to yesterday afternoon, um, when I was getting ready for my Burnshead class, um, most of you know I do a lot of walking and hiking. I'm, I'm currently doing roughly 70,000 steps a week. But anyway, um, so I have really tight quads, hamstrings, calves, glutes, um, flexors. And you know, all I have to do is just reach down and, oh man, I am really tight. So starting my meditation yesterday, I, I got down on my knees and I just sat back and I thought, oh my God. I can get a quiet stretch while I'm doing my meditation. If you, if you have tight quads and your quads, I don't know if you know the technical um, uh, name that all the doctors call your quads, those are your public toilet muscles. <laughs> but um, anyway, if you just sit in hero position, which is sitting with your, your hips on your heels, that will stretch your quads while you're doing this. It also stretches your calves. And if you need a block underneath your sit bones, go for that. Or if you wanna do something a little bit um, more serious, could use a towel underneath your sit bones. If, you're, if you aren't resting on the floor. And you can even make this into a saddle pose by moving your, your feet out a little bit. And you get a little bit of inward rotation on your femurs as they come up into your hip socket. And that's good. Now, you don't have to go back into saddle, but um, just try it. And if it feels good to you, even for two or three minutes, that might be something that you really enjoy. And I, I did this again um, before this class because I, I finished the seven mile hike and guess what? I'm really tight again. So, Anyway, this I find really relaxed. So to start, come to whatever seated position you want. And you don't have to be like this. You can be, you know, cross-legged. You can be however suits you. But just allow your hands to rest on your legs or in your lap. Close your eyes, turn inside your body. 
Take a deep cleansing breath in through your nose. Exhale it out through your nose. Take another cleansing breath in through your nose. Out through your nose. Let your breath come to its own natural rhythm in and out through your nose. Notice where your breath naturally runs to. Maybe you just breathe normally into your mid chest, <laughs> maybe down into your diaphragm. Maybe you vary it. But observe your breath. And that will get your meditation started. And this opening meditation is just to calm your body, get your nervous system evened out. It allows the worries of the day to escape your body. It gets you ready for the practice. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, open up your eyes. And then come forward into table. Now you can do some cat cows. You can lift the leg up and back. Whatever gets you ready for this next pose. Now there are going to be a few poses where we're going to be kneeling. So if you have knees that object, you can always roll up a towel and put it underneath your tibias so that your kneecaps come over the top and don't engage in the floor, if that works for you. But the next time you come to center pause, we're gonna start off with a yawn pose, a spinal balance pose. And so from here, on an inhale, lift your right foot up and back, push your heel to the far wall, the wall behind you. And then on an inhale, lift your left arm up like you're about to shake hands with someone. Your gaze is down on the floor inside your right hand. You can check to make sure that your leg is roughly parallel to the floor. Spinal balance is a great core strengthener. But we're not gonna stay just here. Bend your right knee so that your footprint comes up onto the ceiling. And then on an exhale, bring your left elbow to your right knee in a crunch. And inhale back out. Foot up and crunch again. And extend out. Crunch again. And exhale. Inhale, extend. Crunch one more time. Inhale, extend out and straighten out that right leg towards the back. Next, we have my favorite pose ever, which is awkward airplane. And for every one of you who has never done this, I envy you the experience. On your next exhale, 
Your left arm comes out to the left and your right leg comes out to the right, parallel to the floor. And inhale back to center. Exhale back out. You can really feel your hip flexors here. Inhale back. Exhale out. Inhale back to center. Exhale out and pause here for just a moment. And then lower your right foot down. Bring your left hand down. Then walk your hands back and rise up. Now your toes are pointed towards the front of the mat. Your right arm can be, the hand can be resting on your right leg. This is called gate pose. So bring your left arm up towards the ceiling. Really stretch long and hard. And then on an exhale, side bend off to the right. You might not go very far, that's okay. But you wanna make sure that your left bicep stays in line with your ears. Because if you came forward, you'd be doing a twist. We have that covered later. One more inhale. And on your exhale, come back up, release that arm, both hands down to the mat. Right knee comes in to table and do a couple of cat cows. Now you wanna really get motion in your shoulders and in your hips. They don't move so everything's happening in your spine. getting more synovial fluid to your joints. And the next time you come to center, pause. From here, lift your right foot up and back again. I think I heard someone say, oh no, not already again. And then on an exhale, bring that right foot outside your right pinky finger. And then lift up, bring your hands to your knee. You can walk that left knee back. This is called baby Freddy. You can set up your mat here. From here, try to make sure that your hips are square to the front of the mat. And you have lots of options. You can overstep this by pushing your knee farther ahead. That will stretch your calf muscles. But the object here is to sink your pelvis down towards the mat. This is primarily a hip flexor stretch. Your left hip flexors, um, particularly your psoas, is being extended the maximum. And your right hip flexor, again the psoas, is being flexed a lot. But you'll get to that a little bit more on this next stash. You can stay here, or you can bring your hands to the mat. And if your arms are straight, this would be known as high flying dragon. Now you may find that you have to move that right foot out to the right, which is perfectly acceptable. You may find that that left knee wants to go back farther. That's also acceptable. You can come down onto your elbows. 
But if you're having problems with that left knee, you can always bring a block or a towel underneath your shin. And even though I don't have issues with my knee, I find this, well, I find nothing in dragon pleasurable, but it makes it a lot more interesting. And what you've done here is you've extended the stretches. And if it makes sense to you to walk that right foot farther outside so that you're actually coming up onto your left elbow, that's fine. Those of you who know me well know that this is my least favorite pose ever. But you need what you hate the most. Try to soften those muscles that are being stretched. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, bring your palms to the floor. Walk your hands back. When you can bring that right knee back to meet the left, go ahead. In table, you can do some more cat cows. Maybe you wanna make some big circles with your hips. Or maybe you want to curl your toes under and lift your hips up and back into downward facing dog. Where walking out your dog can be really helpful. On your next exhale, carefully, gently bring your knees back down to the mat. Okay, now the next pose that we're going to do is every man's favorite shoelace. So you don't have to do shoelace. If you want, you can always go onto your back and use a block underneath your sacrum. I think most of you know what that is. Um, but for the rest of you, <clears throat> walk your hands and knees off to the left side of the mat. And then lift your left knee up and back, that long leg again, then bring the left knee behind the right. And spread your feet, your left foot goes to the right, your right foot goes to the left. Walk your hands back and maybe you can sit right on the mat or a towel or a block or two blocks or three blocks. The target of this pose is, are your glutes. And this is kind of like a double swan. But if, well, first off, um, just rest your hands on your, your legs and sit up tall. So 
block. You can also just sit on the block, have one, your left leg out straight, and then bend your right knee over the top of your left thigh. Look at the same, same effect. From here, close your eyes. Just reach around and just feel the uh, tension in your hip flexors, all the way over towards your sacrum and towards your hip socket. You can see how much tension there is there. And then open your eyes. From here, take your left hand, reach towards the front right corner of your mat, then take your right elbow underneath the left, and maybe you can come into eagle arms with your palms together. If you're only crossed, Arms, that's fine. Or if you just grab your opposite shoulders, that's fine. You're still getting the stretch, trying to bring your scapula to the outside areas of your ribs. From here, push your elbows away, and then try to lower your shoulder blades. That will take your shoulders down, it will grow your neck. It both intensifies this pose, but it also makes it more effective. And on your exhale, release. Bring your arms way out wide, spread your fingers wide. And then bring your palms together out in front of you. Interlace your fingers however you wish. And then supinate your palms, pushing your palms away. And raise your palms up towards the ceiling. Feel your shoulders opening. and then release Put your arms float out, back down by your side. Now we're gonna do Gomakasana arms. So bring your right arm up towards the ceiling and pat yourself on the back, right in the middle of your back so that your middle finger's on your spine. Bring your left arm out, thumb down, bend that elbow, bring your left hand behind your back and walk your hand up your back, and maybe you can make a bind. Maybe not. But this is opening up your shoulders in different ways. You have an outward rotation on your left, and an extension on your right. On your next exhale, release. Bring your arms down, give them a little shake. Come into robot arms, so your arms are bent 90 degrees, your palms are facing each other. Pretend you're grabbing a pair of baby birds and then just rock your elbows back and forth. And feel the blood returning into your shoulder sockets. Okay, the next pose, we're going to get back into table. It seems table is a favorite position today. So maybe you can 
just come forward again. Maybe you have to sit back, kick your feet forward. I'll meet you here in table. And the next time you come to center, pause. Walk your hands and knees off to the left side of the mat again. And I promise this is different. From here, lower your right hip down onto the mat with your, your thighs parallel to the front of the mat. This is a face down spinal twist. So I recommend using a towel or something in your collarbone. Um, to lift your head just a little bit, but then turn your chest towards the front of the mat and walk your hands forward, coming down onto your chest. And bring your arms out into T. Maybe, maybe you can gaze up towards your right hand, but don't do it if it compromises your neck. Your cervical spine is really tiny and the muscles that are being stretched to look in that direction don't want to be overused. Your chin can be on the mat or your chin can, you can actually be looking off towards your left hand if that's better for you. But from here, feel the stretch across your chest, across your obliques. Those are the muscles that come from your lower ribs down to your pelvis that help you twist and turn. And just release those muscles. Just soften your chest. Soften your core. Soften your glutes. Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, bring your hands back next to your chest. Push the floor away, rising up. And from here, just swing your legs around to the front of the mat. This next pose is Dragonfly. Now, dragonfly is a straddle. I'm going to use a block and put my sit bones on the front of the block so that the block wants to tip. That will ensure that my pelvis tilts forward. Now, you don't want to go your absolute maximum because then you'll <laughs> never be able to come forward at all. So, bring your feet a comfortable width apart. Inhale tall. And then on an exhale, draw your collarbones towards the front of your mat until your body asks you to pause. At that point, just look straight down at the mat, crown of your head pointed towards the far wall. Round your spine. To help your body soften 
to release the tension, you can bend your elbows and see if that releases your back and your shoulder blades can float free. <laughs> this pose is stretching both your spine and your hamstrings and your groins. And in yin yoga, once you have been able to soften your body, the tension gets transferred into your fascia. And that will stimulate more growth in your fascia. Which will ultimately give you more mobility and flexibility. Now, some of the tricks that may work for you. If you have really tight groins or other adductors close to your knees, maybe just run your fingers over them. Merely by touching your own muscles, you're giving them the authority to release. Begin to deepen your breath. And your next inhale, walk your hands back, lifting up your chest. Help your feet come back onto the mat. If you're on a block, carefully remove it. Bring your hands behind your hips. Bring your footprints onto the mat. And if you're used to having your feet hip width apart, bring them together or bring them farther apart. Just something different today. And then, Begin to windshield wiper and notice the difference between your two hips. Can you detect the difference? We've done a lot of work on that right hip so far. And thank God we're done with it. Next time you come to center, pause. From here, straighten out your legs. Make sure you have a block handy. You come all the way down onto your back. Bring your arms up towards the ceiling and then rotate them down towards the wall beyond your head. And push your palms away from your heels, stretching your back body and then stretch from your toes to your fingertips, stretching your front body, and return your hands next to your hips. Walk your footprints up towards your sit bones. On an inhale, tuck your tailbone under, and lift your hips up towards the ceiling into a bridge. And feel the stretch in your quads, You can feel your glutes, which are doing all the work of pulling your legs back to lift you up. Then carefully lower back down. This time, use the block, if you wish, underneath your sacrum, the highest way you feel comfortable, and you don't need to use the block. So on an inhale, lift up, place that block underneath your sacrum, the long dimension of the block, 
will be left to right, lower down. And if you feel stable, walk your feet forward. They can be close together, far apart. And then just let your feet fall wherever they go. And feel that stretch across your hip crease. Those are your hip flexors, your psoas and your iliacus. You were stretching earlier. If you'd like to intensify this anymore, you can always raise your arms back up and place them behind your head. On your next inhale, bring your arms back down by your side. Walk your feet back up next to your sit bones. You lift your hips up, remove the block. Lower back down. You draw one knee into your chest, give it a big squeeze. Add the other knee, another squeeze, and rock from left to right, all the way from your hip and shoulder on one side to your hip and shoulder on the other, massaging that spine. Not surprisingly, you need to get into table. So maybe if it's the easiest thing for you to do, you can cross your ankles and rock forwards and backwards. You come up into seated, or you can come over into fetal pose on the right side, and then move your left hand and rise back up. I'll meet you in table. Cat cows always feel good. The next time you come to center pause, from here, lift your left foot up and back, place that footprint on the back wall, really push that heel away so you feel your hamstring and then lift your right arm up like you're going to shake hands. Your gaze should be down just inside your left hand. And breathe in and out through your nose. We were in a different class, a weights class called Firm It Up. We'd be here for six minutes. <laughs> and then bend that knee, left knee, and bring your footprint up onto the ceiling. And then on an exhale, crunch your right elbow to your left knee. Inhale, extend out. Exhale, crunch. Inhale out. Exhale, crunch. Inhale out. Exhale, crunch. Inhale out and pause here. 
And when you can't wait any longer, you can go into awkward airplane. So on an exhale, right arm comes out, left leg goes up. Inhale back to center. Exhale out. Inhale center. Exhale out. And then drop that left foot. Bring your right hand down. Walk your hands back. And come up into gate pose. From here, left arm can be resting on your left knee. Bring your right arm up towards the ceiling. Really reach high and then side bend to the left. Maybe it will help if you look at the eye of your elbow. Maybe that's not much help. And on your next inhale, rise all the way up. Bring your hands back down onto the mat. Bring your left leg back to meet the right. Do a couple more cat cows. And then again, next time you come to center pause, lift your left knee up or left leg up. Bring that footprint on the back wall. And on an exhale, bring that left foot next to your left pinky finger. You can move that right knee back an inch or two or more. And put a block or a towel underneath your, your tibia, just below your knee to raise it up. And then grab onto that left knee and push it forward and drop your hips down. Close your eyes and feel where the sensations are greatest. You might be surprised. When your eyes are closed, you're all by yourself. And just observe Which muscles might be twitching? Which muscles have yielded? And then bring your hands down to the mat. Coming into a little low flying dragon. You can walk that left knee out a little or a lot. You can use blocks to raise the floor. And bring your elbows down. Try to lengthen your spine here.
Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, bring your palms to the mat. Raise your chest. Walk your hands back towards your right knee. Until you can release that left back to meet. From here, a couple more cat cows. The big circles or downward dogs. And then gently lower your knees back down. This time in table, walk your hands and feet over or hands and knees to the right side. We're going into um, shoelace on the left. So lift your right leg up and back, push your heel away. And then bring your right knee behind the left. Bring that right foot far off to the left side of the mat. As you walk your hands back, find a place for your sit bones equally engage with your block or your mat. Most of the time I feel like a dog making a nest, going around and around and around in a circle to find the right spot. It wasn't you? No? Okay. Okay, just rest here for a moment. Close your eyes and go inside your hips. Again, the targets are your hip sockets, where this twist is really great. And then your glutes. Your glutes should be starting to soften. Open your eyes. Take your left hand palm up towards the front left corner of your mat. Then take your that's your, that's your right hand towards the front left. Yeah. Then take your left elbow underneath the right and try to come into eagle arms. Or just grab opposite shoulders. The stronger you are, the more difficult, the more challenging this pose is. What you're doing is you're pulling your shoulder blades way off to the sides of your chest, opening up your shoulders. Again, try lifting your elbows up just a little bit, and then lower your shoulder blades by growing your neck. Sometimes it feels like I've moved four inches and I probably moved less than a quarter inch, but you can feel the difference. Close your eyes again. Feel what's going on. And then release. Bring your arms way out wide again. Fingers wide. And bring your palms together. This time, interlace your fingers the opposite direction, the way that feels wrong. And then supinate your fingers again, bringing your palm forward, palms forward. And then slowly raise them up towards the ceiling. 
notice how different this small change is. It may be really significant or it may not. And then release. This time lift your left hand up, pat yourself on the back, right arm out, thumb down, and then bend your elbow and try walking that left hand up and maybe you can make a bind on this side, or maybe not. And the more you bend forward, the more challenging it becomes because the distance is longer. So straighten your spine. That will be the shortest distance between your hands. And on your next exhale, release, lower down, shake them out a little bit, grab your baby birds, and then just bring your forearms frontwards and backwards. Okay, so the next pose is going to be the spinal twist again. So if it's easier for you to just lean back and keep your feet forward, do that. Then make your way into table. Do what's right for your body. Once in table, do a couple of cat cows. And the next time when you come to center, pause. Walk your hands and knees over to the right side of your mat. And carefully lower your left hip down. Face the front of your mat. Have any prop that you might desire in front of you. And then walk your hands forward. Bringing your chest down onto the mat. Your arms out into T. Maybe your gaze off towards your left fingers. But really stretch your arms out wide. And then just relax your palms. Relax your forearms. Soften your belly. Soften your glutes. If you're flexing your feet, just let your feet go. Let gravity do whatever gravity wants to do with them. Breathe into that sensation, those sensations that are greatest. Maybe you can feel your glutes and your thighs softening.
Begin to deepen your breath. On your next inhale, walk your hands back next to your chest. Lift your chest up a little bit. And if you want to look really cool, you can take that left arm and thread the needle behind your right wrist and you'll roll all the way over onto your back. Easy as you please. Otherwise, get there however makes sense to you. Stretch your feet out towards the far end of the mat. Bring your arms beyond your head and stretch from your heels to your palms, your toes to your fingers. And then bring your arms back down by your sides. From here, you can walk your feet a comfortable distance apart. You can bend your knees with your knees going out or coming together. That's all your choice. Your hands can be close to your body or way out to the side. Whatever is best for you. Stretch your spine long. Lift your head an inch, tuck your chin, and gently lower your head back down to the mat and just release. Let your spine sink into the mat. Take a deep cleansing breath into your nose and exhale out through your nose. Take another cleansing breath into your nose. Out through your nose. And take rest. I'll be coming around and adjusting some of you. I will not be able to get to everyone. If you do not want me to touch you, just wave me away when you hear my footprints.
Begin to deepen your breath. Bring your awareness back into your space. Bring movement to your fingers and to your toes, to your wrists, and to your ankles. Gently roll your head from left to right. And when you're ready, walk your footprints up towards your sit bones and give yourself a squeeze. And rock again from left to right. And then the next time you come all the way over onto your right side, pause there for a moment. In fetal pose, using your right arm as a pillow. And scan your body to determine if there's any residual stress lurking in your tissues. And then using the strength in your left hand, to push the floor away, rise up to a seated position. Thank you for sharing your yoga practice with me this afternoon. And thank you for spending the time and effort to maintain your health of your body and your mind through the practice of yoga. Use the compassion and empathy that you use on your mat. Take that with you everywhere you go and share it with each person you might meet. Namaste. Namaste. My name is Clint and this has been Yin Yoga. Thank you for coming.